Hi everyone, this is Andrew. Today I'll be talking about how to be a good parent. Just a few caveats to begin with. Uh, this guide is specifically targeting young children, not teenagers. I'm a parent myself and I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. So, but I don't claim that this is going to be helpful with teenagers. I have no clue about teenagers, I'm sorry. Maybe in about a decade's time I'll make another video about how to deal with teenagers. Just remember, good does not equal perfect. Perfect is not realistic, nor natural. Uh, yeah, being a, being a perfect parent would be an impossibility, so I'm not trying to encourage that here. For example, my five-year-old son, to say he hits me in the back of the head with a stick. I could be calm and ask him nicely to stop, but this may result in him hitting me some more. So being angry and upset is often a very natural reaction and it teaches them a good life lesson. So in some situations, being human is a very good life lesson. It's a disservice to your child to always be perfect. If your child gets away with hitting people, and everyone's always calm and relaxed, then that's not teaching him how people really react. So it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to react in a human way, as long as you're not overly harsh. And that leads to our first point, our first guideline. Don't be harsh. So never hit, smack, spank, slap, shove or shake your child. Aggression towards your child leads to an aggressive child. Always create a loving environment. There's been lots of studies about this. I know a generation ago it was very normal to smack your child, but it leads to aggression within your child. That child will often become aggressive to other kids. They'll get into fights. They'll become a bully. So it's not good. Learn other ways to discipline, discipline your child. Be fair. The punishment should fit the crime. Would you punish your friend in the same way? For example, uh, what if your friend dropped some cake on the floor? Would you raise your voice and get angry with them? Of course not. So why do we do that with our two-year-old? It's actually very common. I've seen lots of parents do that. So you have to be fair. The punishment should fit the crime. If your child purposely wasted food, uh, in the old days at least, they used to send them to bed without any dinner. I think that's far too harsh and it's not being very fair. Maybe a good punishment would be to make them clean up the food. Don't yell, scream, shout or carry on like a two-year-old. Children learn from your behaviour. Fear scars your child. Yes, I'm a bit guilty of this. Sometimes I raise my voice, sometimes I shout. But it's not good for the child. All it does is instill fear into them. It's not. It might get them temporarily to stop doing a negative action, but ultimately it just scars them. It's not good. Find other ways to uh, get your child to do the right thing. Don't use bogus, over-the-top threats. For example, my son didn't clean up his Lego. Should I say, oh, if you don't clean up your Lego, I'm going to throw it all in the bin? No, because I'm not really going to do that, am I? So you shouldn't be saying it, really. Probably something that's more realistic. I'm not saying that you shouldn't threaten, but do it in a more realistic way. For example, he didn't clean up his Lego. I could say, well, if you don't clean it up, next time I'm vacuuming, maybe some of the Lego will get sucked up and we'll lose it forever. It's a realistic thing that could happen. It's a consequence rather than a threat. Don't blame, undermine, label or compare your child to other children. It only makes them feel bad. Uh, it makes them feel hurt. It lowers their self-esteem. We're not there to make our children feel bad. We're there to love them. We're there to teach them. So yes, none of those things are good. I see it very commonly with parents that they compare their child to other children. That can't have a good any good effect. It, your child is your child. They're not Billy. They're not Bob. Treat them as an individual. By label, I mean things like you're such a naughty boy, or you're an idiot, or whatever. I mean, obviously that's very harsh, but anything like that can make them feel bad. So don't label them. If they're doing something wrong, tell them that they're doing something wrong, and tell them what they can do to fix it. 2. Spend time with your child. Very important. Spend quality time with your child, not just sitting in front of the TV. Yes, so I know that we're all busy, but you really need to give your child some love and attention. Children need your love. If you're always busy, they'll become distant. They'll become isolated. 
Time with your child is worth more than material things. Possessions quickly become boring. Play with your child. I've seen a few articles on this. I read one article where they said 15 minutes with your child is worth more than any other any present you could possibly buy for them, especially young children. They need your attention. They need your time. They need your love. So time with your child builds confidence and self-esteem. It gives them an outlet to talk about any problems in their life. If you're not there for them, then they can't tell you about what happened at school, good or bad. Like if something bad happened, well, it gives you a chance to help them. If something good happened, well, it gives them a chance to tell you about their success. And here's a few uh, ideas. Get out in nature, run around, make pizza together. These activities promote health and well-being. In Australia recently, there are many health issues. Obesity, lack of vitamin D is actually a big thing, believe it or not. Even though we've got lots of sunshine, many people spend most of their days in offices or inside. Uh, so yeah, get outside and get some vitamin D. Not only is it good for your, good for your child, uh, it's good for you as well. Fitness, health, make food together, it encourages them to eat properly. Three, be a parent. Be friendly, but don't try to be their friend. You're their parent. You don't treat your friends like your children, so don't treat your children like your friends. Friendship is a much more laid back type of relationship. As a parent, you've got duties. You've got duties to raise good children. So as part of that, you need to discipline your child. Children need boundaries. In the real world, there are many rules and regulations. Now that doesn't mean you have to agree with all the rules and regulations, but you have to at least teach your child that there are rules and regulations. You can't just let a child run around in a restaurant doing anything they want, because there's consequences to their actions. People will get upset. People will start complaining. In the real world, if they're at, a, at their first job, they can't just run around doing anything they want. They have to obey the rules of that company. They have to at least show consideration to their other workers. Teach your child. You are their educator, their guide, their life coach, their supporter. Be there for them. This is probably the main role of the parent. You're there to be their teacher. You have to teach them what's right in the world, what's, what's wrong. You have to teach them how to get on with other people. But the main thing is to be there for them. Teach them patience. Don't give them anything they want at the drop of a hat. Patience is a virtue. It's very important. I know nowadays it's easy to give your child a tablet and let them play all day. Some parents give their children everything they want, all the toys that they like and all the rest of it, but it's doing them a disservice. In real life, you can't just have anything you want, anytime you want. It just doesn't work that way. You have to teach patience. Teach them that they have to work for things. They have to wait for things. And finally, teach them to be responsible, caring and accountable adults. Ultimately, this is the goal, isn't it? You're trying to raise children to be responsible, accountable adults. Number four, respect and independence. Encourage independent behavior. If they want to try something new, support and encourage them. Very good advice, I think. Uh, often parents will try to dictate to their children what they want them to do, but I don't think that's very good parenting. You should be there to encourage what they want to pursue. So if a child wants to learn to ride a bike, well, you can go out and buy them a bike and let them learn. On the other hand, if you go out and buy them a bike and they don't want to learn the bike, well, it's not very good to force them to do it either. So respect their decisions, but guide them when their thinking is faulty. For example, if they say, I don't like vegetables. Well, that could just mean that you need to find some vegetables that they do like. Maybe you can go out shopping together and find the vegetables that they're willing to try. Maybe you can explain to them why we need vegetables from a health perspective. Don't force them to do something just because you want them to. For example, I bought them a new t-shirt, but they don't like it. This happens a little bit in our family. Uh, my wife will go out and buy a t-shirt for my son, but he says, I don't like the colour or whatever. Well, why is it our place to force him to wear it just because we Made, it, made the decision to go out and buy it doesn't mean he has to like it. It's easily solved. When you go out shopping, oh, if you're buying clothes, for example, go out together, find clothes they like. People have different tastes. I wouldn't be upset if my friend doesn't like oats, so why should I force my child to eat them? 
I'm guilty of this. You know, I've gone out of my way to make make my family a nice meal and then my son says, oh, I don't like that food and doesn't want to eat it. And then I get angry and then he gets upset and it's not good, really. Ideally, actually, what I've learned to do now is that I create enough food, enough different types of food on the plate, say five, four or five different types of food on the plate, where there's something that he will like. If he doesn't eat one or two of those things, fine, doesn't matter. The point is that he's eating. And that's what it should come down to. If he doesn't like broccoli, so be it. Lots of people don't like broccoli. Encourage activities they enjoy. Don't feel bad if they don't like what you like. I like making paper aeroplanes, but my son doesn't. So what? He doesn't, I don't have to get upset over it. Let's just find something that we like doing together. And number five, probably the most important, forgive. Your child will make mistakes. That's how they learn. Don't get angry. Forgive them. Teach them the right way. Very important. We all learn from making mistakes. That's how people learn. So don't get angry with your children when they make mistakes. It's just silly because that's how we learn as well. You'll make mistakes as a parent. Learn to forgive yourself. Too true. I make lots of mistakes. Occasionally I raise my voice. Occasionally I do something that's silly. I say something bad. So we have to learn to say sorry. Sometimes you'll say a bad thing to your child. Say sorry to them. Explain your actions. Forgive yourself. Maybe you've had a bad day at work. Maybe your boss yelled at you. You've come home and you said a bad thing to your son. Just admit that you've done something wrong. Say sorry. Tell them why you got upset. Tell them that you had a bad day at work and I shouldn't have said that bad thing to you. Relish the good times. Forgive and forget the bad times. Nobody is perfect. Your children are only young once, so savour those times. Enjoy them growing up. Enjoy them learning new things. If things go bad, just say sorry. Forgive. Forget about those times and just focus on the, the positives. And admit your weaknesses. Show your child that you are human too. Play a video game with them where they kick your ass. It's sometimes good to show that you're human too, so just do things that they're good at as well. Don't just focus on things that you're good at. Let them beat you sometimes. And finally, a summary of everything we've discussed today. Number one, don't be harsh. Don't hurt them. Be kind. Be loving. Two, spend time with your child. Be there for them. Savor their childhood. Three, be a parent. Teach your child, guide them, support them, discipline them when required, but don't be harsh. 4. Respect your child, encourage their independence. And finally, 5. Forgive your child, forgive yourself, and learn to say sorry. And there we go, that's my guide for being a good parent. Hopefully you've learnt something new, and if you disagree with anything I've said, or if you have some further comments to add, just please leave them for me in the comments section below. Okay. Until next time, thank you.